never give in. Never give in. Never, 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 never. You and I have the courage to say to our enemies, there is a price we will not pay. There is a point beyond which they must not advance. Socialists don't like ordinary people choosing, for they might not choose socialism. We cannot afford to be so politically correct anymore. Conservative One with George Christensen. G'day, I'm George Christensen, host of Conservative One, the podcast defending traditions and freedom. And I've got a great guest today, uh, someone who has been a very strong defender of tradition and freedom in this country. It is the uh, woman formerly known, I guess, as uh, political posting mama, uh, Marika Marika Rancy. How are you, Marika? I'm very well, thanks, George. You're broadcasting to us from... uh, lovely melbourne at the moment where um things uh, are a little bit askew as uh, we're seeing in the media before we get into the nitty-gritty of uh, really what we're here to talk about mm-hmm. can you just tell us how's things in melbourne right now <laughs> i feel like i'm in the twilight zone to be honest um uh it was nice to actually be able to kind of get dressed up for this because i've been in my sweats since about march i think <laughs> like probably <laughs> most of us um you know, there's there's been some advantages. I'm someone who likes to look at the silver lining and, uh, you know, um, the fact that we're all kind of, everything's kind of reset and slowed down and I've spent a lot of time um, with my my family and uh, and that's been lovely. But, um, yeah, it's, it's an incredibly um, uh, stressful situation for many for lots of different reasons and uh, there's a lot of anxiety out there um, at the moment, um, yeah. So it can't be denied. It's crazy. I can can imagine. And um, from what I'm seeing, I mean, I understand in a pandemic, public health uh, is is paramount, but um, uh, I'm very concerned about the kind of things that I'm seeing emanating out of Victoria at the moment uh, in terms of the the heavy handedness of the law. Uh, Even, you know, Pauline Hanson might have supported that lockdown of those towers, but I think the day that we see people being locked in their own homes uh, by authorities, something is really, really wrong. So uh, Mm. anyway, that's uh, all I'll say on that. (laughs) Unless you've got something to add. (laughs) Oh, look, I've got a big mouth and there's a whole lot of us out there who are, you know, have have quite strong opinions. Um, Yeah, look, um, you know, uh, it's just a matter of of making sure that... um, you know, there's always a balance between um, uh, keeping people safe and, uh, and, and you know, too much tyranny, you know, at the end of the day. Um, you know, we call it lockdown. There's lots of phrases, but, you know, you feel like you're under house arrest. And um, I, just, I just hope that, uh, you know, that Australians um, aren't too ready to hand over their, their freedoms. Um, and, and like I said, we're happy to, you know, we're a compliant lot and we're happy to, protect people and and do our bit and you can see that by the reaction um in the community but yeah i just um that's my concern there's always a balance and i'm a freedom fighter at the end of the day that's what got me here so yeah well that's what we're here to talk about uh defending traditions and freedom and you have been a very big defender of traditions and freedom in the past uh and you're um, stepping up to the challenge again i see but many people will not know you as uh, Marika. They'll know you as uh, political posting mama. And um, what spurred, um, you know, the average suburban mum to become so politically active, uh, taking up the mantle on social media to try and um, fight back in what's colloquially known as the culture wars? Yeah. Yeah. Um... Look, I call myself an ac- accidental activist. I guess a lot of people um, fall into that category. But for me, um, ultimately, um, I was your typical Australian mum. Um, I actually grew up on the polar opposite side of, of politics and had quite a social justice warrior background. And, uh, you know, if you, if you talk left and right, very much that way of thinking. Um, and I was someone who got my information from from the TV, you know, raising my kids and you turn on the news and you, you know, whether it be the ABC or places like The Project and uh, I'd get my information from there most of the time and uh, 
And, you know, as far as I was concerned, that was that was fact. So that was me a few years ago. And I, I guess I was someone who um, I really had my head buried in the sand. And I think what I've experienced is that uh, frog in boiling water. So for me, mm-hmm. I felt very, very challenged and confronted. Um, I am someone who, um, you know, I'm a, I am have become a conservative later in life. And, and especially as I've raised my children, I do believe in conserving institutions. I believe that family's um, the absolute key to, um, you know, the backbone of society. And if you can fix what happens in the home, generally you'll, you know, send out people who are healthy and well and able to contribute. And um, and so for me, it was an attack on my family. And um, I was absolutely shocked when my kids came home from school and informed me what was going on. So much so um, I didn't really believe it. And so... So could I jump in there, Marika, sure. and just say that's a, a big thing to be a political convert, to go from someone who uh, may have nominally been sort of uh, on the left, I guess, or, uh, uh, you know, to, to being uh, a conservative who would be classified as a culture warrior or a culture warrioress. Um, you know, was it the children? Was it your children being exposed to things in school that led to that uh, complete turnaround or was there something else going on? Uh, Perhaps I didn't realise that I was a conservative for a long time. Um, I didn't really think about many of the issues. I just got on with, you know, day-to-day life and and the the stresses of raising a family and and the joys, I guess. But, um, yeah, for me... um, I, I just assumed that uh, that those that were governing were doing the right thing and that when I was sending my children to school, they were getting a, a good education. And for the most part, I hadn't had any concerns. Um, so for me, it was certainly um, the attack of um, this, the so-called safe schools program um, where I just went down that path. But you know, I guess I started, I um, had a bit of a conversion experience when I was 20. So um, having come from a, you know, very different background, I, I was probably already developing those conservative views, but I just didn't, didn't really know where I sat politically, I guess. Yeah. So uh, people later tried to claim that you were not some organic uh, suburban mother that uh you were, in fact, um, hardcore and political. Uh, they pointed to the fact that you were a member of the Liberal Party, but all of that seemed to have come to, uh, after this, after you got involved. Talk us through that and set the record straight um, on, on these claims. Yeah, I'd love to. So my frustration with the program, the first step I did was to go straight to the school and it became very, very apparent after I'd read the curriculum and I was just, I was actually shocked that it was even in the school. Um, And uh, I spoke to the principal and I tried to kind of work out what was going on and it became very apparent that even the the principals of the, my kids were at a couple of different schools, but they they actually felt quite powerless and they said, this comes from the top. You know, the, the Department of Education tells us what we do. Um, and here, right? Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, right. and just, just most of the, a lot of the programs really, they've lost their, um, I guess, their, it, that that's changed within the schools where pr- principals don't have, um, I guess, the same authority over their schools. And so I, I thought, okay, well, if it's political, um, I, I need to kind of tackle this politically um, and I uh, was invited to, because there was a lot of rumbling going on here in Victoria, I was invited um, uh, to a, an event um, where there was a federal member of parliament and I had never met a member of parliament before. And, and even at that time, I was like, I don't know where I sit. But as the values were presented to me, they spoke to me in terms of freedom and um, and ultimately I, I realised that, that freedom was at the heart of this entire um, battle. Um, because, I, you know, at the end of the day, we should all be free to raise our children with the values we want and educate them with, you know, the values and, and the education that, that we would like and not have that inflicted on upon us by the state. So I am um, an evangel- I call it like an evangelical personality. <laughs> so um, when I do something, I kind of want to bring everyone with me and tell everyone about it and I just thought if I can get enough people on board um, then you know at the end of the day 
hopefully we can we can actually do something from inside the tent so it's a little mm. bit of a, a a goal to kind of not infiltrate but just to actually um have a voice and have a say i had no idea how the political system even worked i didn't even know that your average person on the street could join a political party i hadn't even thought of that um and so once i recognized that actually um there's about 200 people in that building in canberra making policy decisions i don't know the exact number but you know um ultimately i see i don't even know <laughs> How it all works. 225, but, I think. Yes, yeah, thank you, thank you. So you know, 225, and so and it comes from the bottom up. So I thought, all right, well, I'll just join locally and I'll start agitating and I'll start being a bit of a thorn in the side. And um, and so that was actually my goal. And I I I had success, and I I had success at doing it. I wasn't trying to take over. It's for me, you know, politics is all about. I've seen it's all about power plays for for most mm. people. It's about power. Um, but I was very authentic and and genuine in my motives. It was purely about um, looking after not just my kids because ultimately I can look after my kids and and we can indoctrinate them the other way, you know. But um, yeah. but you know, I, I was concerned for our society. So well, um, that's what happened. Yeah. Let's delve into the um, the issue. Not so much the safe schools program because a lot's been said about that a lot's been said by yourself a lots been said by myself yeah, and yeah, many, many right. others yeah. uh, on, on safe schools and uh, why that was such an affront but the fundamental issue that I see here really is the issue that you've just raised and what you've said parents having the right to determine uh, what things their child uh, their children may learn when it comes to sexuality I mean that is not something historically that has been uh, really in children's faces in schools. It has been left up to parents and for very good reason, because it pertains to values mm -hmm. and families form values. Schools can add to that, but ultimately families are the, the arbiter. Uh, they're also the, the, the uh, procreator of values, I guess, um, sending them down in generations. Uh, it was interesting, Marika. I had uh, almost a, a, a debate. It was supposed to be an interview, but it turned into a debate with an ABC journalist. Surprise, mm -hmm. surprise. Surprising, uh, yeah. About this issue. And, um, you know, it was put to me, well, what if there was a, a homophobic parent or a bigoted parent? Should they be able to get away with passing their values on to their children? And I said, well, hang a second. Uh, I'm going to turn this around. Is it the ABC's view or your view that uh, parents should not be allowed to pass values onto their children? Like right. that's what we're talking about here. Are we really going to have government and government institutions step into that space where we're going to regulate what parents can and can't say to their kids? Um, and and. Look, I'm sorry to, to bang on and on about this. Uh, I'm going to let you uh, talk in a minute. No, no, no. I love it, George. You're one of my heroes. But, <laughs> well, uh, same. It's a mutual admiration society. <laughs> but, um, uh, it, it, you know, if you want to talk about the direction uh, or where this is all going to head to, have a look in Scotland. The Scottish National Party, which is anything but a nationalist party, it's a socialist party in extremis, actually, uh, so the Scottish National Party introduced laws over there. I'm not sure whether you're aware of this, Marika, uh, but they introduced laws over there which introduced parent, uh, no, introduced the guardian of children. So so it was this title, uh, the child's guardian or the guardian of children. What it was was a child could select uh, a person from uh, particular groups of people. It could be a public servants, teachers, um, a particular... Uh, classification of people you had to be in a specific profession and there would be some legal status ascribed to that person mm -hmm. so that person could essentially be the circuit breaker if there was an argument between mum and dad and the kids uh, the kids could appeal to the third party um, uh, that would basically uh, uh, give a call either way whether the decision should be um, what the kid wants or the decision should be what the parent wants and it was actually mums like yourself in Scotland 
that became aware of this issue stepped up to the fore and said, no way, we are not going to have, you know, quasi-bureaucrats in control of what goes on in our families. Yeah. And they actually stopped it. They stopped it through legal action, mind you. They stopped it yeah. through legal action. Um, so that to me actually, uh, we can go into the intricacies of safe schools, but at the end of the day, what this whole thing is about is diminishing the role of parents, mums right. and dads, from having having authority over children. And I felt very concerned about that. How far did you think that the push for the Safe Schools program and everything else that's akin to it goes towards uh, undermining the authority of parents in families? Mm. Yeah, well, you've spoken exactly to the point. I mean, when I first um, did, you know, the first viral video, I was talking about this little program in schools. And for me, it's been a real journey to piece it all together. And the, the real question is, who owns the children? Right. And that's that's the real battle that I see, which you've, you've spoken to. So, um, you know, it became so much more apparent it, through policy, this push for the state to become the parent and to emancipate children through, um, you know, all snuck through behind quiet doors. Um, and so no one knows. They're not putting it out on, on the media or, you know, they're not giving you these, this information. But if you look at the policy, so, you know, for example, our Doctors in Schools program with over 100 operating school, um, doctors clinics, um, and most parents are still unaware. That's already happening here in Victoria um, where doctors are there and uh, children have been um, emancipated from their from the Medicare now, uh, I believe it's 14, but I actually received a letter from my 12 year old um, asking for her bank account details. Um, I'm yet to, I've started that follow up process, but that's that's quite frightening. Um, so there's, yeah, it's, it's a bigger picture. It's who owns the children. And, and if we don't, as mums and dads, um, step up and claim our children, um, you know, it, it's, it's quite frightening where this is all heading. And and that's ultimately exactly what you said. It's not actually about, they can put in all, all kinds of different programs and they do do that. Um, but the bigger picture is actually who owns the children. And, and I believe that, that um, you know, that's that's their, their mother and father. And, um, you know, there's there there are instances, of course, where children do need to be rescued from certain situations and, and and, uh, you know, that's part of, of the picture. But in terms of what's going on, um, you know, it's, you know, I, I was one of the, I think one of the first voices early on. I didn't even really know what it was, was but I was learning about this cultural Marxism, Marxism, and uh, and it's undeniable. Like every institution is being um, threatened and attacked and uh, it's it's a restructure and a, a real takedown of Western civilization. And um, it's fascinating and it's coming in, in, you know, all areas and all aspects. But for me, it's um, the biggest battle we have and, and mums and dads um, really, really do need to to push back. And we've seen it. We've seen a lot of pushback and there's, there are some good things happening, but it's far more ingrained um, than I realised initially. You're listening to Conservative Wine. So you mentioned just then about, um, you know, some situations where children may need to be removed from the family unit for safety reasons, of course. Hmm. Um, I'm, I'm, I get concerned, so I mean, I absolutely agree, but I do get yeah. concerned about um, how far the envelope is pushed in that uh, realm as well. Um, you know, look, yeah. I've heard of foster parents who have been denied um, their role as foster parents and they have had foster children removed from them because of their Christian beliefs, because yeah. they are conservative Christians and yeah. um, uh, the state has decided that uh, that is not a healthy um, way in which those children should be brought up, a healthy institution in which the children should be brought up where they're subject to uh, biblical ethical teachings. Um, so it's a short step from there to saying, well, actually a situation in which uh, biblical ethical teachings are being put on your own kids is also a, an issue of child safety 
And I have heard some, I don't have any specific mm -hmm. tales to regale, but I have heard some uh, alarming sort of stories about that happening around the nation. What yeah, it's have a case you heard in yeah, there's yeah. a case in WA where foster parents um, were denied um, based on, you know, um, to be foster parents based on their Christian worldview and everything that they um, answered on the, the question. I mean, you know, this is, I think, a, a, an issue that the Australian Christian Lobby have taken on really, really well. But, um, yeah, they they were queried and questioned and, and ultimately denied um, placement as, you know, and they, they were you know, all reports, just an amazing family. So you, um, you're right, Christians are, um, and Christianity and Christian values are definitely being demonised. And what what concerned me was once I kind of looked into the Respectful Relationships program as well, which is another program that goes hand in hand with safe schools, um, I could see that there was um, a potential for this to be weaponised again, um, uh, in in that way, in that uh, um, yeah, people with with uh, certain views, you know, suddenly views in relationships that aren't respectful become a form of violence, and that's kind of the the undertone. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I could kind of see where they were heading. Um, from my point of view, that 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 was something I'm you know on the lookout for because um, we've got to keep our guard up because there's certainly this. Um, war on our children mm -hmm. and it is a war on our children without a doubt um and uh, the people who are behind some of these programs make no bones about where they're coming from obviously uh ros ward from the safe schools coalition made no bones about the fact that the program as far as she concerned was an instrument of marxism and ensuring that uh Marxist influence uh, got there into the schools and obviously into the children. So um, that's quite alarming in itself. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, they bragged about uh, people from the Safe Schools Coalition bragged about the fact that parents had no right to override uh, that program. And uh, I yes. find similar things go on with similar types of programs. I want yes. to move on from there, though, Marika. Mm -hmm. um, you, uh, look, today, uh, or, or this week, I should say, um, we found that uh, Coon Cheese has been cancelled, uh, even though it was named after the fellow that uh, pioneered the process, uh, Edward Coon, um, yeah. of, of, of making cheese, um, that uh, it's been deemed racism. Uh, so we've, we've, we've solved racism by banning Coon Cheese or cancelling Coon yeah. Cheese. Yeah. Um, but uh, this cancel culture is just uh, so insane these days. Yeah. But it's it's uh, examples like this show it to be insane. Whether it's coon cheese or whether it's uh, redskin lollies or um, uh, chico lollies or whatever, it's just dumb sort of stuff. Uh -huh. But it's also insidious. Uh -huh. And there was a massive pile on on you. Uh, I noticed the media reporting uh, when you were known as political posting mama, um, where you were just getting slammed in the media. As I, I referred to the um, allegations before that you were really some political operative that was pretending to be an average mother, um, you know, and, and then there was a, obviously a court case that cost you a lot, no doubt, mentally, emotionally and financially. Um, uh -huh. But all of this pile on, uh, to me, that must have had a great impact um, that probably made you think, is it worth it? Um you're back now. You're back. You've, you've you've gone away for a while, obviously, to take stock, but you're mm -hmm. back now. Yeah. When you've had all of that attack, what has made you come back? What has made you think, well, this is worth it? Mm. Yeah. Look, um, I've actually um, been diagnosed with some PTSD from the experiences. Um, what happened to me at that at the time I was in fight you know fight or flight turned out I'm a fighter um I was literally mobbed I was sent um you know gay porn I was there was threats on my children very very um sexual in nature very violent very vicious and by 
hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and they'd get you on every platform and every possible way. I had my home address was, um, I was docked, so I was put on a public website of 25,000 people and um, they were, you know, threatening to turn up to my home and it was it was huge. And, uh, you know, at, at the time I really was running on adrenaline. And okay. um, I, I just I, want to pause there for a second mm-hmm. um, and we'll, we'll get to the point what made you, uh, what, what's made you come back into the fight. But that... Yeah. What you've just relayed there is absolutely and utterly atrocious. This is one of the big things that I I really despise the left for. They go on so much about their values, about anti-bullying, I mean, uh, about tolerance and about all the rest of it. But when they disagree with someone, when someone's putting stuff out there and is putting it out there in a way that's popular, they 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 basically resort to uh, and anything goes to shut this person down to shut them up because what they're saying is against what we believe, mm-hmm. and I just find that disgraceful. The fact that you were vilified, victimised, you were doxxed, uh, you had hate mail, you had illegal emails if there was porn that was being sent to you. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Marika, that that was absolutely terrible. I'm sorry that you went through that, but what it does expose is the absolute and utter hypocrisy mm. of the left in in attacking you, a woman, like that. Mm. And I just yeah. felt like to say that. So uh, Thank you. The, the, yeah. the point the point is, um, you're back. You're, uh, yeah. you're, you're you're swinging again. That's great. <laughs> Yeah, look. <laughs> at the end of the day, um, you know, I I did I did need to to definitely take a break and take um restock of, you know, what was going on and and you know, very very interesting in terms of um when we talk about the left. So it it came to my attention that actually who I thought were members of the Greens party and uh and uh even the Labor party and um that had kind of mainly um teamed up against me uh, a lot of them were actually members of the Liberal Party here in Victoria. So we've had a uh, infiltration um, of, of very, very mm-hmm. aggressive um, lefties and they were very threatened um, by me. I didn't know that at the time. Um, but, you know, that's, I guess, once again, why it's so important for good people to to consider getting involved and, and um, just, you know, having a vote and taking a stand. But uh, why am I back? Are Ultimately, these people, these people in the Liberal Party, the dreaded black hand, are they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I and mean, you well, can see. I mean, you know, we need a strong opposition in Victoria. We need, we need that. And. Um, you know, we've got some fighters down here, but ultimately it's, uh, yeah, it's it's mm. pretty messy. And then you've got, you know, agitators as well, white anting the good guys on the other side. But anyway, that's the internal stuff. But I think it's important. I think it's actually important that people know because most people go, oh, I'm not getting involved, good people. Um, and I understand why because it's it's pretty brutal. But at the end of the day, um, you know, who's governing us? You know, these are the, these are the kind of people that... Um, you know, uh, making these policies and and supporting it, and you do need opposition from in, within the tent. So, but for me, for me personally, um, the the partisan politics stuff is is not for me. Actually, um, I've I've come to realise there's a much bigger picture going on. Um, for me, it's it is a spiritual battle. It's actually not so much about even left and right from a partisan point of view. It's about good and evil, and um, and so. I started ultimately because um, one of one of the main issues is um, I'm actually uh, pro life, um, and so that was actually my very first post was about um, you know ab- abortion, which was a, a topic that you know in Victoria we have full term abortion, um, yeah, and uh, yeah, and just horrific laws which most people don't know. Even even the people that may call themselves pro choice um, may not be aware of just how brutal. Um, you know, the laws are here. But that was my first kind of um, thing. And then ultimately, um, yeah, I just, I I guess as a stay-at-home mum, I I actually, you know, I completed high school. I didn't finish my first degree, but I did quite well academically. But I really, really, really from a, um, when I had a bit of a change of heart, I just, um, and because I guess my own background influenced my decisions, I decided I wanted to be, a stay-at-home mum, and um, it in the you know generation I've grown up in, it's incredibly countercultural. 
But there are so many of us out there, but we just don't get represented um, by the media. We don't get, you know, get, um, yeah, we're, we're in our homes, we're doing the work, and it's an incredible, um, incredibly important role in our society that's just been, um, you know, <sighs> so degraded and um you know they pretend it, we're insignificant and i think that's cuz cuz we're very significant and and you know i respect choice and i think everyone should have that choice but for me um you know i've worked on and off a little bit part time but ultimately i want my kids to have a soft place to fall and i wanted to create a nest and i wanted to create an environment for my children so that they could flourish and they're the true weapons that i'm going to send out into um the world and so i wanted to initially i just wanted to speak out against the uh the, what i call the, and what is deemed now the feminazi movement um which is um you know uh th this wave of feminism that's just so aggressive and and has turned itself on its head where we're at a point where um you can only choose if you choose a certain way of living the career or you know um you're willing to put your kids in um into childcare from the cradle and and uh you know and that choice um is is not really there anymore and and we're not encouraged and so that was my initial reason for getting involved and actually putting a, a political posting up it was um, a combination of things, but ultimately um, I wanted to speak out against um, what I see as a very, very aggressive movement. I I don't think there's been a more aggressive movement than the feminist movement um, with the attack on, on family um, because ultimately when you take the mums out of the homes and you demonise the fathers because fathers are absolutely crucial, um, you know, and you can see how they've successfully achieved a lot of their goals. So, yeah, that's ultimately. And so I just actually want to get back to um, sometimes you can get so bogged down, and this is what happened to me, so bogged down in the scrum and, and kind of fighting in this this turf, um, you know, that's just, it's, you know, you know, politics, it's brutal, um, that you can kind of lose your light and lose the joy. And, and for me, that happened. And I, I became a bit of a shadow of myself. And ultimately, um, I think we need positivity. I think we need hope. I think we need good values. I think we need messages to mums out there and dads out there that you're worth it, worth it. You're worthy and you're important and you are needed. And I think you mentioned when we did our Good Source launch, George, that you think Western civilization's gone. And I was probably being <laughs> a little positive in saying, you know, we've got to try and recapture what we can. I, I, I probably think you're right. I gave that a lot of thought and I thought, yeah, it's, it's you know, we know we know how the story ends ultimately. Yeah. Um, but basically, um, you know, now is the time to really turn to our families and to, to strengthen our families and um, to put that back together because um, it is the most, I think, the most important organisation on the earth. And, um, yes, yeah. yeah, so that's ultimately what I want to speak to in the culture. Now, you've just mentioned the good source. Uh, this is one of the main platforms that you're going to be um, uh, promoting uh, your uh, this entire worldview that you're putting forward uh, uh, for women, um, and uh, that's available at goodsource.news, uh, as is this podcast, by the way, and this uh, yeah. uh, the show Conservative One. Um, so that's a, a great thing. Are you also uh, going to be stepping up the game back on Facebook or are you just going to be going through the good source platform? Look, to be honest, I think I think Facebook's almost had its days. It's been I've had a love hate relationship with it, but um, it's it's really interesting. They shut down, and you, and you'd know this too, George. They shut down conservative voices, and yeah. they're really um, you know it's their, it's actually their base. That I just saw something actually this week that the top ten conservative um, platforms on Facebook um, were uh, sorry, top ten were all conservative. You know, your Ben Shapiro's and yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and listed them. You may have seen it. Um, um, you know, but ironically, they're the ones they want to shut down. So, you know, sh they shadow ban us um, and also the laws and policies. So it's a really dangerous space. I was spending way too much time, you know, when you when you are responsible not for just what you say but for what other people say, 
um, on your your platform. I mean, at the end of the day, Facebook could be responsible, all the person, or the person that says it, but they can come after you know um, the person who. Uh, run the page it's just too dangerous um and yeah i was spending too much time so yeah my goal i don't know i i want my facebook peeps to come along to the good source with us <laughs> i hope they do and i'm also on parlor i've just jumped on there so oh, are you on parlor yep. yeah i am on parlor yep so I'll, i think uh, we're gonna have to yeah take our our custom elsewhere and and really you know go there in droves and uh Facebook's been great for the mums. It's just a really, you know, they, they've mastered the platform. But, um, yeah, I think it's had its day. I have the love-hate relationship with Facebook too. I think they do it better, much, much better than Twitter. Twitter is an absolute yeah. stress pit. Oh, I'm, I'm off it. I've never, I've never yeah. been happy in my life being off it. Um, mm. But uh, it, it is now completely and utterly uh, rolled up in this council, a cancel culture. Uh, mm. Facebook has, to a degree, tried to withstand some of that, yeah. but eventually they won't withstand it. And you see some signs uh, coming in on that. Uh, I've never had uh, any post um, taken down. I've had some with some fake fact checking on it. Uh, yeah. I've, <laughs> I've never been uh, banned or sim bin for a few days, but I'm sure. Yeah. If I wasn't a member of parliament, that may have happened, okay? Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> but uh, uh, look, um, uh, Rekha, uh, I think that um, all that you've been through, all that you've done, uh, and the fact that you're back, as I said, punching on, um, it's very important. Uh, you mentioned before my view that's somewhat pessimistic about uh, the trajectory of Western civilization and uh, what I would call uh, the last vestiges of the Christian social order in our society. Okay. Um, that may be true. Uh, there is a saying, and this is quite blokey, I'm sorry, but uh, oh, a well, saying in a book that I recently read uh, by Marcus Aurelius, who is uh, a Roman emperor, uh, you know, the paragon of Stoicism, uh, the philosophy of Stoicism. And um, uh, I'm not going to repeat it verbatim, but it uh, the saying almost has become like just this eye-opening sort of life motto for me uh, that um, at some point you'll have to recognise the world in which you live in and the power that controls it, the source from which you spring, and that the fact that there is a, a limit to the time assigned to you, and if you don't use it to free yourself, it will be gone never to return. And I think that um, while we might know uh, that there is something wrong about the world in which we live in, that the trajectory is not so good. We also know the source from which we spring, which is goodness mm -hmm. because it's God. And exactly. there's a limit to our time. Yeah. And I guess at the end of that, we can either say we um, we fought on for the source or we, uh, we acquiesced and... Uh, you know, I've decided like you that I don't want to be one of those people that says that I just rolled over. Yeah, yeah. I'll so, take a rest when I need it, and and you know, and I think that's important. But absolutely, it's it's fighting the good fight and and defending um, the freedom and and what I believe to be the kingdom of God, and and uh, that's worth it, you know. And I've gone yeah. to, I've gone this far. May as well keep going. <laughs> very much so. Well, more power to you. God bless. Thank you Thank very much you. for joining us for this uh, podcast uh, of Conservative One uh, Defending Traditions and Freedoms. Great to be with you, Mareka Rancy. Thank you so much, George. It's been an honour. We will decide who comes to this country and the circumstances in which they come. We'll preserve for our children this, the last best hope of man on earth or we'll sentence them to take the last step into a thousand years of darkness. You've been listening to the Conservative One Podcast with George Christensen.